Hi, I'm Koopy the Fat, but you can also call me Koop. And in this Frost Mage PvE guide, I'll go over the following. Talents and Glyphs, Stats, and Single Target Rotation and AoE Rotations. Let's begin with Talents. Tier 1 is designed to usually help you out with movement. Presence of Mind will make your next spell an instant cast, and this is best for tank and spike fights, or if you can really plan your movement, but otherwise it falls behind. Scorch is the best talent to take, I feel, overall, as you can use it constantly on the go, and it's the best to use for heavy, heavy movement fights, which are usually the ones found in this tier. Ice Flows allows you to cast two spells while moving, and this is on a cooldown, but compared to Presence of Mind and Scorch, mages usually don't take this talent. Tier 2. Temporal Shield is useful in situations where a lot of damage is dealt over a relatively short time span, so as long as you don't get killed, you don't really need healing during that time. Blazing Speed. It has great movement speed, but you need damage to proc the ability, and so that really limits when you can use it. Ice Barrier is best for damage dealt over longer periods of time. So for this tier, you're, you usually decide between Ice Barrier and tempor Temporal Shield depending on the fight. Tier 3. This tier really doesn't do anything for us in terms of damage. It's really just there for crowd control capabilities. Ring of Frost is useful where we need to CC targets and I feel it's superior to the other two talents of this tier since it, it freezes them for the longest periods of time and it's convenient. Ice Ward is only better than Ring of Frost if you need to put it on a tank that needs to move away from the raid group and is kiting adds. Frost Draw is only useful for freezing non-elite mobs and this really doesn't happen in most raid fights. Tier 4 Greater Invisibility allows us to take a lot less damage from certain mechanics by 90%. We only really take this talent for mechanics where we really need to cheese something that would otherwise kill us, such as... I forget the name of the ability on Elegon from the ads, but that's a great example. Cauterize. Basically, once every two minutes, it's on an internal cooldown, and with Cauterize, you can you die, but then you're brought back to life, and you take 40% of your health and damage after being restored to half your health over a certain amount of time, and so you need to take heals. I feel this talent is great, because you can pretty much use it to avoid having to move for certain mechanics and get more DPS out, but people have their own opinions. In Cold Snap, the heal is nice, but otherwise you there's no real reason to take it for raids. Tier 5. This is the tier with the mage bombs in it. They're pretty much equal single target, and they differ in different si situations. Nether Tempest lasts for 12 seconds, and each time it ticks, it'll do 50% of the damage to one random target near it. You can put this dot on any amount of targets, and it's best to use for encounters with one to two enemies, especially if they're spread out. It also scales the best with haste, technically. Living Bomb. This dot also lasts for 12 seconds. It has a one second GCD, regardless of haste, and once it reaches the final tick, it'll do a AoE damage t to every target around it. It's different in Keta in that if you refresh this bomb between the second to last tick and penultimate tick, it replicates the explosion effect so you don't have to let it actually fall off anymore. It's best for fights with 3 to 5 enemies or a few separated groups of enemies for multi dying. Frost Bomb. It explodes after 5 seconds, dealing damage to its main target and having that damage is AoE to everything around it. This bomb deals no dot damage before the explosion, so it's technically not a dot. So if you have a trinket that relies on dot damage to proc it, then don't choose Frost Bomb. 
It has an initial 10 second cooldown, but both the duration and cooldown of this bomb are reduced by haste. And remember that with the Glyph of Fire Blast, when you, when you use Fire Blast, it'll have a unique effect on each bomb. So Nether Tempest will do 50% of one tick damage instantly as AoE damage. Living Bomb will spread up to three other targets. And Frost Bomb does 50% of its AoE explosion instantly while removing the bomb. Okay, tier 6. Invocation. I feel this talent is best because, because you just recast Evocation every 40 seconds for the damage buff and it allows you to move around as much as you need. You can use Rune of Power, which is basically just a rune on the ground that you place, but it restricts your movement a lot. And for most fights, you usually have to move a lot more than Rune of Power warrants. In Cantor's Ward, you can also use this talent for fights involving periodic damage, but most fights don't really have periodic damage that goes out every 30 seconds. The only one I can think of with that is Garalon. Okay, let's go over some glyphs. Probably the most important glyph right now is Icy Veins. What this does is it rem Glyph of Icy Veins will remove the 30% haste that Icy Veins gives and pretty much gives 20% extra damage. It's hard to say at what gear level this becomes better. It becomes a lot better for trolls than it does the other races sooner. But I would say whenever you go past 50% haste during Bloodlust is whenever you want to use this glyph. Especially when you start nearing best slot gear, you'll probably want to start using this glyph as haste is our best talent. Glyph of Ice Lance allows you to cleave your Ice Lance for 40% damage to a second target. And I would usually recommend this glyph if you can get it. Glyph of Water Elemental. Basically it increases the health of your Water Elemental by 40%. And also, there's no need to put it on passive for it to follow you. You can put it on assist, and it will always follow follow you, rather. And it will always be casting. It's not really a DPS increase, but this glyph is a really huge quality of life glyph, if you can fit it in. Glyph of Fire Blast. This is a glyph that will provide the effects that I mentioned previously for Fire Blast, and you only need to take this Glyph for AoE fights. Glyph of Evocation adds healing to your evocation, and it also adds healing to Rune of Power. This Glyph is useful for healing yourself if your raid needs it, but you should never put it in place of DPS Glyphs that you might need. Glyph of Armors, it adds defensive capabilities to your different armors. And I wouldn't recommend this glyph unless your healer is really needed for a fight. Let's talk about your stats. Intellect is our best stat that we can gain through gemming and enchanting, but we cannot reforge to it. It increases the amount of spell power we have, so our spell is hit harder, and it converts into spell crit as well. Spell power makes our spell hit harder, and it's very useful, but we can only acquire it through trinkets and weapons and intellect. So you can't really worry about it. Crit. Crit rating increases the chance that we can crit on our spells, and when we crit, it does 100% less damage, typically. For a Frost Mage, the amount you want to aim for is 28%, which we refer to as the Shatter Cap. And the reason for this is, once you reach 28% spell crit just from your gear, you will reach 100% crit on all of your Fingers of Frost procs and your Brain Freeze procs. So basically whenever your Ice Lance and Frostfire Bolts all proc and you have that much crit, they're guaranteed to crit. Expertise and Hit. Basically we need to reach 15% hit in order to hit raid bosses and our spells don't miss. And obtaining these stats will increase the chance that we hit them. 
haste. It, our haste increases our casting speed, meaning more fingers of frost procs from getting more ice masses and frost bolts out, and it can also add more ticks to our dots at certain haste plateaus. Haste is currently our best secondary stat, apart from hit. Our mastery increases our damage on frozen targets, meaning in most rated counters, our fingers of frost, ice lances, and brain freeze frost fire bullets will hit harder with the more mastery that we have. Currently, our stat priority is intellect, and then hit, which is equal to expertise, really, and then haste, and then crit, and then mastery. Let's go over the single target rotation. First, what you always want to do is refresh your evocation buff or rune power buff or your encounter's ward if possible. And then you want to apply your mage bomb. So whichever mo bomb that you chose and the tier 5. Second, you want to cast frozen orb on cooldown. The only time you should ever wait to use it is if you have fingers of frost procs that you still need to use and you should always use them up before casting your Frozen Orb. Next, you want to cast Frostbolt until the debuff, which is 3 stacks. And these stacks increases the amount of damage that your Frostbolt, Ice Lance, and Pet all do. So it's very important to keep the stack up on the boss. Next up, you want to cast Freeze from your Water Elemental. So you definitely want to have that keybound somewhere. It gives up to 2 charges if you use it on two enemies, and it gives one charge if you use it on one enemy, so plan accordingly and dump your procs if you need to before you use it. It's also tricky to use while casting Frozen Orb, depending on how many enemies are up. Next you want to cast Frost Firebolt as soon as you get a Brain Freeze proc. And depending on what bomb you have, you might want to use it sooner or later. Or if you have Frost Bomb, then that's guaranteed. Next, you want to cast Ice Lance when you have Fingers of Frost procs up. And finally, when you can't do any of the other steps, you just spam Frost Bolt as a filler for a while. On 2-4 to four enemies, what you want to do is apply Flame Strike, and then apply your Living Bomb and spread it. Or if it's two targets, Nether Tempest is also a good pick. Frost Bomb, you can also use it, and it saves a major glyph slot if you use Living Bomb, but it's slightly lower than the others. And then after that, you just continue with your single target rotation until you can do one of the above steps. For five or more enemies, you'll want to apply Frost Bomb or Living Bomb, and remember that Frost Bomb doesn't trigger trinkets that are dependent on dots. But the difference between Frost Bomb and Living Bomb becomes bigger the more enemies are added. Um, next up, you want to use Flame Strike. And once Flame Strike is on cooldown, you want to spam either Arcane Explosion or Blizzard, depending on which one is more appropriate for the situation since they both do about equal damage. Thanks for reading this guide. I hope you enjoyed it. I have more information about this guide as well as my other videos in the video description.